Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. So, vanilla yogurt, pancake sausage with syrup, and coffee. That's my breakfast today. A little late because Leah got to get ready at 7. I said, well, I'll get up at 6.30 and hurry up and take my shower and then she can go in the bathroom and then the pond. But I woke up at 6 and then I said, oh, I'm just going to close my eyes for a half hour. I ended up waking up at 7. So I had to wait for the, the round. So... When the pond left, I took my shower and made my breakfast, so not that late, but oh well. I was just tired. I said, oh, I'll wake up in a half hour. I was up at, it was six. But I closed my eyes and all of a sudden at 7 o'clock. No. Leah was already up and ready and ready to go. It was 8 o'clock and then I had to wait for a panda. That's it. So I slept. Two hours. And I wasn't going to set my alarm clock. Because I said I'm just closing my eyes for a half hour. But I stayed up late too watching. Uh, what movie did I watch now? Oh. Wasn't a movie. It was a documentary. On um. Alcatraz, but they, I always thought they were three. They were two brothers and this other guy, their friends, but they were another brother too, see. But he didn't go to Alcatraz. They were talking like he didn't go to the track, but he didn't try to escape like the other two. And that's why they put him in there, because they didn't kill no one. They tried, they robbed a bank with a toy gun, I guess. But anyway, but the other brother... They said he tried to escape and got electrocuted in the other jail. But they hounded and hounded and hounded the family after that. Thinking they knew where they were. Now... They weren't talking about the third guy because the third guy it wasn't three but it was three brothers and another guy. So they already they never well I think they closed the case but they were still some uh, someone in the Someone in the, um, you know, like bondsmen, like some of the, there were two that was still, like, investigating because they, they thought they, uh, they drowned it or something happened to them and, but, The two nephews, they were two sisters left. 
and the two nephews, what happened was they said they visit the other brother in the other jail. And he had, he was there, he was sort of like on a probation thing for two years there. And he was getting out. And they figured they bugged the table or something or they were listening because he said, he said soon as I go out, because he was there two years, that was only in a couple of days he was being released. He said he was going to go visit the two, to the sisters. And they went and visit him. And go visit the other two, the ones that escaped. And then I guess that night, they said he tried to escape or something and he got electrocuted. But, that's what the autopsy said. But the funeral guy, director, he, he said that it looked like he, he wasn't uh, electrocuted, the guy that did him up, you know, at the funeral parlor. He said he looked like he was beaten up. He was, he was beaten to death. So that was always on their mind. That they beat him because they wanted to find out the information where the two guys were, right? So anyway, so they hounded the family and they hounded the family and they were always watching them and seeing them where they, they were going and all this bull crap. For years, they found bones, human bones, around the, across the river from the Alcatraz or whatever. And they always, they checked the DNA with the other guy, not the two brothers, but the other guy. So it wasn't his, but they always wondered if it was one of the other two, the two brothers. And, of course, they wanted a sample of their DNA, the, uncle, or the nephews or whatever, and they said no. They weren't going to do it. They weren't cooperating with them. So, they got a graveyard with just that family. Just that family. They got a graveyard of all the quite a few of them actually. It was quite a big graveyard. They got a family um, plot, and they want the two nephews wanted the uncles to be buried there because that's a family graveyard. So they went and seen one of the inspectors or whatever. They didn't trust the, the other guy that they dealt with all the time. So they, and they told them. They said they would give up the, de um, the other brother's DNA. If they open the ca casket and do a x-ray, see how he was really, how he really died. Well, I don't trust them. I don't trust them at all. He probably was beaten to death, but they, they're not going to tell them. I mean, they all work together, hound, uh, bounties and stuff, you know. I guess the case stays open until they're 99 years old or 
the judge calls it off. I don't know. There's a few anyway. So the nephew said the only way that you can get a bone from the other brother is if <clears throat> they check, do an autopsy to see how he really died. They don't believe. <coughs> <coughs> Why would he try to escape? He's leaving in a couple days. Like, he's being relief. So anyway, they said they would. But, then they showed a picture. This family friend that they used to go out and swim together out in the, the river and they used to do all this stuff and everything. Well, well first of all, they showed the Chris, Christmas cards. No, no, they just dropped it in, see. And they both signed it, but it wasn't good enough evidence because the nephew still believe that they're, they escaped. So in 79, I guess they would have been 50 or something. It happened in 60, so. I don't know. Anyway, no, they didn't look like 50 in the picture. But they said they would be 85 right now. 85, 86. So anyway, it looked like 79, they, uh, the, I told a photo. He went, he had the recorder, and he recorded it, and he told the mothers and sisters and that, that he happened to be out in Rio or something, and had it to the washroom and one of the guys seen them there and they started talking and blah 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 and he just wanted let them know that they were okay and he he taped it I guess or something the conversation So they showed them the picture, so they were going to get it analyzed. They did a background check on um, Buddy too that brought the tape and told him the story and I guess he flew airplanes and stuff and uh, uh, snuggled drugs and he's been in jail and Anyway, they said that's where they were, and they were on a farm, and took a it took a picture anyway. And um, what they used to do because he asked on the tape, "How did you guys escape?" And then they never talked. And he said, "Oh, I know, because what they used to do is uh, take a rope or something, hook it to a, a boat, and they they'd go." Or something like that. So anyway. So. Uh, they did the DNA. It wasn't. One of the boys. The. The men. The picture. They, did, they had a specialist. He said it was them, because of course they had longer hair and everything, because took the pictures. They had family pictures, and they also checked it beside the uh, inmate pictures, see? And then those pictures, and the forehead, and the lips, and the mouth, and the way the... He said he was pretty short with them, and he's a specialist. Couldn't do it like nowadays with the digital and everything, but he did overlap, overlap it. But he couldn't do the computer thing because it was too old. Anyways, um, and the autopsy said that he was electrocuted, but I don't know. That sounds awfully funny to me.
but he's going to get out in a couple of days. They were stupid. They should have left him alone and followed him and then they could have found out where the other two was. If he was going to go out and... That's what he told the family and they were bugging everything back then. So they definitely bugged that table. So I don't believe that part. But anyway, they believe... So some of them who was writing a book on it and the first detective that they went to and the two nephews, they went over to Alcatraz and the guy writing the book, he he got all the pictures and everything and all he's been covering everything. So they went to the cell and they still show the false head and all that stuff and the hole in the wall and everything and blah, blah, blah. Then he took them down to where they went over on top of the, the jail through the tunnel there, through the whatever, the heating system. Then there were this black, big, t uh, full of uh, whatever, it's like a pipe. It's not there anymore, but he showed the pictures because uh, it was full of uh, coal, like coal went up and down, so it was like, so they went down that, and then they showed the picture of their footprints, that the coal, right? And um, then they went down to the WAF thing and they they showed uh, how they did uh, a dinghy thing in life jacket with raincoats and then they went all the way around the island because right where the thing is they couldn't go in front because that's where so they went all the way around. Now the shuttle, the one that brings in prisoners, <coughs> they were a 12 and a 6 o'clock one. 12 midnight, so they must have done it at 12 because I think lights was out at 10. And it would only taken them two hours to do this. I don't think they would do the morning. I think it was the 12. And when they left, see the suspension cords and stuff was missing too. They used it like a rope and they went out and then they said someone in a boat because there were this other police officer. He was along the dock and having a cigarette. He was out for dinner and he could see across and he could see around that time and that day and everything activity out there, see? And someone in a boat didn't catch nothing, didn't even stop that long and took off around that time. So I believe they did escape it. But they probably, they don't have no jurisdiction in Rio or whatever. They probably just let, let it be. But uh, the other guy, I don't know what happened to him. He might have went his own way. I don't know what happened. So I know, I watched the movie years ago. And one of them, uh, but I only thought it was three. And one was supposed to go but he decided not to or something. I'll have to watch that movie again, Escape from Al Alcatraz. Don't have to really watch the movie. I could do the documentary too, right? But I didn't know they were a third a third brother. That's what the nephews were saying. They were saying uh, nobody ever talked about him. But I don't think he tried to escape because if he was the person that was trying to escape all the time like the other two, they would have sent him to Alcatraz. <clears throat> but it was a pretty good documentary. Because I remember watching a movie and it stopped there. Like, they didn't even say they found bones. It just... But that was many, 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 many years ago that I watched Escape from Alcatraz. But I could watch it again, I suppose. So anyway, that's my rattle on today. So today what I'm going to do is just sit back, keep an eye on the job bank, there's sort of a freeze on jobs right now, right? So, there's something going on. So, 
I can sit back for a couple of months. I mean, LaFonda told me, I, you know. But I'm still applying, of course. I want reception. I don't want administrative. I want just reception. I don't want too many duties. You know what I mean? The more you make, the more duties and accounts payable and accounts receivable and invoices. And I don't want to do all that. I just want to answer the phone, file, take messages. Um, you can schedule meetings. There's, you know, wait. I don't want all those duties. I don't want administrative. I just want reception. Reception, um, filing and you know, photocopying documents and typing out reports and and letters and you know I don't want anything to do with uh, accounting or accounts or payroll or anything if you do administrative you're doing all of course you get paid a good money but I don't want all of them I just want to sit <clears throat> and do receptionist work Or secretary, they call it. But when you get into the administrative, <clears throat> I've done both, so I know. Administrative, you do get paid good money, but I'm saying on this t plan on staying here for a while anyway. So, I mean, I don't have to make that, you know. I just want to be a receptionist. Cashier, I don't want fast food. The only cashier I would do is like no frills, Walmart, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But they're, they're hard to get, especially full time. It's hard to get full time doing that, you know. But fast food, I don't, I don't want to do that. I did put my name in for the Walmart thing, but order picker or whatever they call it. But I don't have a vehicle, see. So I have to pick it for someone to deliver it. There's two. There's a company that does that. If you work for Walmart, you got to pick it and deliver it. If you work for the other company, you don't have to. You pick it, give it to someone uh, in the driver or something. So I applied for the one without. Anyway, I'll just keep on applying. But today I might either watch the documentary on it. I might even watch the movie because I'm pretty sure. They only showed three. The two brothers. Well, of course, it's Alcatraz. But it, they never mentioned the other brother. Maybe uh, watch the documentary and see if they do. <clears throat> so no one, he, just, he couldn't do it or something. He... He backed out. One guy backed out. You know why these, these things still stay after 50, 60 years? It's like the ti Titanic. They said it was unsinkable. And it did. And the Alcatraz, they said, no one can get out of there. Unscapable. See, when they say stuff like that, right? And then something happens. 50, 60 years down the line, they're still talking about it, you know? But yeah, it's a hard prison. Hard, hard prison. They didn't want to be proved wrong, that's why. The guy who built it or whatever, he's the one that made him look bad because he was telling the press, oh, nobody can escape from here. And he wanted them bad. Or he wanted to prove that they didn't get off the island. That's what he wanted to prove. But they still escape, so it don't matter. They still got out of the prison, even though the sharks might eat them or whatever. They still escaped from the jail. But anyhow, so that's my story today. I'm cooking chicken, fried rice, and putting vegetables and stuff in it today. 
and Ian sleeping and Leah staying home because she still got that cough and so Leah's home in bed and so that's about it. I'm not doing very much. Just keep on check, checking the dog bank and I think I'll, I'll, I'll probably watch, maybe I'll do the documentary. Sort of like Bonnie and Clyde too. Bonnie and Clyde, the reason that's still going on is because that was overkill. Like, all those bullets in that car, it's ridiculous. Okay, they might have robbed banks and killed and whatever, but when you shoot a car until the tires go down, that's, that's overkill. But anyway, there's a few what's, so Bonnie, Titanic, Bonnie and Clyde, Alcatraz, was another thing. After 50, 60, 70 years. And I think people, well, maybe not so much Leah's age, but Jenny's age, up until Jenny's age, probably, they know about, especially, well, I think, I don't know, Bonnie and Clyde, I mean, that was just, the Titanic, well, they showed the movie, see, that's what kept, and they did do the Bonnie and Clyde movie, I think two, two of them, two different movies of it, eh? A modern day, so people might know that. But Alcatraz, they didn't, uh, they did one movie, and that was years ago, when I was a teenager, so they didn't redo it. They should redo it, though. Anyhow, I know, I guess they say that jail is haunted. I, I wouldn't go in that jail. Anyways, you guys all have a good day and stay safe and it's cigarette time.